Well, good afternoon, everybody. I am Ed Steele. I'm the uh, CEO of EAS Consulting Group. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about the FDA compliance enforcement uh, over time, what has particularly happened in the last couple of years, and what you might expect in the next couple of years. Um, I spent 30 years of my career at FDA. I was in the compliance area at FDA, uh, mostly in the Office of um, Compliance in the Center for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition in Washington. Uh, I was there for 30 years and saw compliance uh, from the FDA side. After I retired from government, I went to work for a consulting company as the vice president uh, in the area of foods, dietary supplements, and cosmetics. Uh, since then, I took over as president of that company, and for the last six years, I've had my own company. So for the last 18 years, I have uh, had direct contact with the regulated industry. And it's th that perspective that I wanted to share with you in terms of FDA's compliance enforcement. Um, so I've been on both sides. I've been on the, the regulated side and the industry side. And uh, it just baffles me that the industry, after uh, a, a tremendous amount of time, has such a high uh, violation rate. Uh, in the dietary supplement industry, there was, um, I think there was something like 150 inspections made last year by the agency. Uh, 70% of those inspections that were made by FDA, they found some kind of violations. They classify them as official action indicated or voluntary action indicated based upon the severity of the problems. But nonetheless, the vast majority of firms that FDA inspected uh, have, have found problems. Um, the question is, how could this occur? Uh, in the dietary supplement industry, it's not like the regulations or what FDA planned to do has just come out. Uh, in fact, FDA is kind of noted for its slowness at which it develops its regulations and its rules, and then is even slower in starting to enforce those requirements. Um, I been in those, well, I said 30 years and what, 18 is almost 50 years I've been in the, in the industry. And I've seen FDA come from a, a very benign regulatory agency to one that is very stringent and uh, aggressive in its law enforcement. And as many of you know, that FDA in the last four years have become extremely aggressive in uh, doing more and more inspections, more and more reviews of product labels, and more importantly, taking action when they find problems. Um, but yet, we have a high violation rate. Um, we as a company put on training programs, and in particular in the dietary supplement area, we have training programs we've been putting on for many years in uh, labeling and good manufacturing practices. And it just amazes me that companies will spend the money to send employees to those programs. Um, they sit through, I'm sure they're very attentive in terms of what uh, the issues are. They seem to understand what they need to do to, to bring their firm into compliance. And then, lo and behold, as time will go on, and we'll find those same firms are receiving warning letters. Um, well, I have a suspicion of why that occurs. And, and, and I guess that's the, the main issue that I'd like to, to address today is why, after all these years, 
can firms not be in compliance if all this information has been available for essentially decades. In the case of a, the dietary supplement industry, there was an advanced notice of proposed rulemaking before FDA even came out with a proposal. And the industry had, that happened to be generated from the industry itself. And, and that particular document was given time for people to have input into. Um, they had the opportunity to shape it and provide their comments. The agency has to review all those comments. And then the next step is a proposed rule. And when the proposed rule came out, it really reflected FDA's thinking at that time. And again, industry was allowed time to comment on those and to react to it. Uh, when Deshaies passed, uh, it mandated that FDA develop regulations, and it was some 12 years after those regulations that a final regulation came out. Um, I happen to have a, a copy of the, the GMPs with me. Uh, this, this document is, uh, well, the guide for what, what you have to do to comply with FDA requirements for good manufacturing practices. Uh, so it took 12 years to get to this point. And then after the regulations are finalized, FDA allowed a three-year period for the industry to comply. And that was based upon the size of the firms. So it didn't start its enforcement until after that occurred. And then when they made their initial inspections, they were more in terms of guidance and when they found violations. But all that has changed. Now, after all those years, they're now being uh, increasing the number of inspections. The new administration or the administration that came in when, after the Bush administration, the Obama administration, uh, which was much more uh, enforcement minded, they are now, when they find violations, they are following up with warning letters and uh, going further with regulatory action if that becomes a problem. So it's no secret, everybody knows about it, and yet we still have the violations. Well, let me share with you one thought, that unless the top management in each of these companies gets committed to safety and, com and complying with the regulations, I think it really sets the tone for making it very difficult for the firms themselves to comply. Uh, quality people that are hired to do a job, unless you get the backing and support of your top management, uh, it's very difficult to affect that. And the reverse is true. If you build culture that into your culture that compliance is important and the safety of your product is important, then I think you'll find that it's going to be much easier in the long run. It's going to be um, in your best interest because you'll be able to comply and pass those FDA inspections. So yesterday there was a, uh, a presidential election. And what happened up until yesterday, a lot of the regulations that were coming at it, the agency were kind of stalled. But I think you're going to find that that's all behind us now. The new administration or the old administration has a mandate to continue what it, it started. And for the next four years, I think you're going to see continued, if not more aggressive, enforcement. So the bottom line of my remarks are, you know, these things are no secret. There's plenty of organizations. You have uh, the folks at Virgo that are involved with publications. You have trade associations that spend uh, the countless amount of time educating their members about what the requirements are. There are consulting groups such as ours that are out there uh, available to you. So there's plenty of resources and just be aware that that's going to continue. So with that, I'll close with remarks and hopefully that's been a, a little help to you. Thank you very much.